Uh, Theo uh, Pinson, um, you've only you've got a small sample size, which is seven games. But what is he notably doing better than he had previously? Okay, uh, his freshman year, his appreciation of having the basketball was not what it needed to be. His assist error ratio wasn't very good. Last year as a sophomore, it was really good, and I think he's continued to add on to that. Uh, he is a playmaker. He sees things that a lot of other guys don't see. Sometimes he doesn't see the defense still there too, but I think that that's continued to grow. I think he's more active on the backboards uh, than he was when he came in as a freshman. His shot has gotten better even though you know, we have such a small sample of what it is this year. I was trying to see here. There's three for 10 from three point line. During practice, he'll make more than 30% of threes. Uh, so I've seen a continual growth in him in a lot of different ways. Roy, how did Isaiah make it out of practice yesterday? What's your, your hope and expectation? Uh, we didn't practice yesterday. Oh. So it's what I said uh, on Monday at the radio show is he'll practice today and we'll see how he goes, how he does things in practice from a playing standpoint, how successful he is. And then we've got to see what he feels like afterwards and what his recovery is like. And, uh, so he'll, he'll do probably half of practice today. We'll switch even. Uh, have a substitute or he'll be a substitute for somebody else and then we'll see what it's like after that but if he makes it through and has his play up to a level that he can do some things you know then it's a medical decision but if he can't do that it's not even a medical decision but it'll be after practice uh, and maybe even tomorrow morning see how he feels you know, hamstrings or something that we try not to mess with a whole lot Coach, the amount of time you guys have had off, what are some of the lessons that you took away from Thursday's game and now you've had some time to rest before tomorrow? Well, we've, it's, it's been unusual, you know, and part of it's been driven by the injury to Isaiah and part of it's been driven by the, uh, the fact we've kept Kennedy out of practice. And uh, so it's been more rest, and you used the correct terminology there. Uh, uh, we gave him Friday off. Uh, the game was Thursday night. We gave him a Friday off, brought him in Saturday. Uh, looked at clips from the Duke game, tried to show them some things that uh, we did okay and showed them a lot of things that we didn't do okay. And uh, try to get them to focus on that, try to get better. Uh, let them shoot and then let them go. Then we came back Sunday and tried to have a really good practice. I uh, didn't have Kennedy or Isaiah either one at practice. And then uh, a game yesterday off again, it was more designed to try to be the correct program for Isaiah than anything else. And. Uh, and then we'll practice today. So it's been more rest than anything. Coach, your record against State as a head coach, 31-3. and three. Some secret formula that you have? That... You know, we've, we've had good teams. <laughs> That's the secret right there. I mean, I get enthused to play them, and I get enthused to play a lot of people, and we don't do as well. But uh, uh, the game here, I, I was really had a great deal of respect for their team. I just watched them beat. Virginia Tech easily after Virginia Tech had beaten Duke and and uh, everything went our way early and then Dennis getting in foul trouble was a huge part of it and uh, you know since then they've they've been a widely different team I mean they beat Duke at Duke opposite of us it was about the same kind of game give or take and then they make every play down the stretch and we were over there and didn't make every play down the stretch and uh, a couple of games they really struggled so it's uh, uh, it's hard to gauge. I'm sure Mark feels like it's like a, a lot harder to gauge than I do. Uh, but the uh, uh, state game against Virginia Tech and then their game against Duke, they were just outstanding at that point. And, and we realize, you know, the game got out of hand here and they'll be more enthused. Uh, they'll be fired up. They'll be able to make some amends for some of the other things that have happened. Some of the other losses can be balanced out by one game if it's us. You can remember when they competed at a national level, mm -hmm. you know, back in the 80s, winning a national title, mm -hmm. winning the ACC championship in 87. What's different about the rivalry between UNC and State when they're up there and playing well or good? Well, it's just another one of those. I mean, I was here when, you know, when I first came back as a, or first came as an assistant coach. You know, it was, State was going through a little bit of a down stretch, and it was us in Virginia, and then it was us in State, and then it was us in Duke, and uh, and Duke has maintained it ever since. But uh, uh, those rivalries of us against uh, North Carolina State and against Virginia and against Duke in those years was vicious. And uh, again, I don't try to figure out what the other team's problems are and what they're solving, you know, try to solve them before I got enough problems of my own kind of thing. But uh, 
those were great rivalries during those time periods. Yeah. I, I know you get really fired up to play those guys, but I mean, is it a little less fun when they're not quite as good, but it's so easy for you? I'm that not saying sense. it's easy, guys. They can beat us. It's, but three it's, times. I don't care. If beats me once, I remember that. Uh, but uh, that's not going to help us one bit going in there tomorrow night. And if anything, it, it makes it them more enthused. And so uh, I guess we've got some good records against some other teams, too. Uh, but uh, I don't ever think the previous game has anything to do with the next game. It's just every game is its own little entity into itself. And, if somebody else says it's been easy, then they haven't been sitting where the hell I've been sitting. Is it challenging to get the kids to understand that? Well, I think so. Uh, I think it's challenging to get anybody ready for any game, but at the same time, they have a great deal of respect for North Carolina State. I mean, they saw the Duke game, and they played the Duke game, and State finished it out, and we didn't. And, uh, and I think our kids trust us. We're not going to say, you know, oh, gosh, guys, well, there's no way in the Dickens that we can beat these guys that are so much better. We don't say that about anybody. And, and when we are more gifted than other people, I tell them we're more gifted. Uh, but, uh, no, I don't think our guys, no, I, no, I assure you, they're not taking the Ocala State lightly, period. Do you? you don't believe in the rock bottom theory, Rory? You know, the, the game right after a team loses at 30 by 30 like it worked for us. I don't know. You know, I, people don't remember it, but I do. I was coaching in Kansas. We lost eight straight games. We hit the bottom after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And you know, so that wasn't pleasant. I brought them in downstairs in the field house and a room just like this with chairs ten times worse than these, just little, little metal chairs, metal tables, concrete floor, and showed them movies, showed them Hoosiers, showed them Rocky, pop popcorn for them, did everything in the world we could do. And we tried it for eight games before we finally got it straightened out. So. Rock bottom, you know, you could say it was rock bottom after we played them. And then, let me see what we got here. And they played Duke, you know, two or three weeks later and beat the Dickens out of them. Not beat the Dickens, beat anybody, you beat them. That's what so it when is. you saw the score Saturday at Wake Forest, that you didn't say? Mm. No. No, I really didn't. And you guys probably heard me say one year, press conference, they said, How do you, how's it feel to be peaking at the right time? We've won semifinals, I think, maybe. The, Big 12 turn by 45. We lost the next day. It's, it's college basketball. And uh, the swing of the point swing in some of the games have just been outrageous. You know, and not just in the ACC, but in everywhere. Well, with, with some of the defensive issues the last five, six games, are you, are you seeing kind of improvement behind the, the stats? Uh, not really. You know, it's. Uh, I thought we played better defensively at Duke, but we had some major breakdowns as well, and they shoot 50 some percent for the game. Uh, Notre Dame, we did some good things defensively, but we still had some breakdowns. And I've probably spent more time going back to the original foundation of our defense and done more drills over and over and over the last couple of weeks than we ever have. And I'm hopeful that one day we'll see some improvement, but I haven't seen it yet. Were you guys at a, a higher, I mean, obviously the stats there are not like early in the year, you guys were a, a top 10 defense nationally, according to some of these Well, you know, that's, you I'm not one of those analytic guys. Right. You know, and uh, when they said we were the top 10 defense team in America, I thought they were drinking. <laughs> I'm telling you, because I didn't see that out on the court. Right. And, uh, and yet, when we played state right here, the first part of the game, we were really good defensively. I mean, really good. And uh, I don't know, they probably had a, they shoot over 50% in the second half. Uh, and, but we were really good. But no, I, statistics, you can turn it around so many different ways. And anybody can turn anything the way you want it. But uh, somebody said that I heard all the announcers that we got back from Maui about how good we were playing defensively. And I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, that's not what I'm seeing. Right. Uh, you know, we played against some teams and missed some shots. Without Kennedy practicing, I mean, how much of a disrupt, disruption is this with multiple guys and all of them? Well, it's, it's, I mean, we've had Shea Rush playing the power forward on the blue team. You know, that's uh, not exactly the kind of competition you want to get for. And he's a great kid. He's going to play some here. He really is. But he doesn't even know the plays. We can't run things. And so, uh, so he's practice, um, and that is the only practice we've really gone full speed since last Thursday. It was. Uh, not what we wanted, but uh, I believe Steve brought it up. I mean, we've had two games all year where we've had everybody on our team. And so the 
be in practice uh, at that point. And that's the reason today is so critical for us. I mean, we got two hours or so that we're going to be out of court, but we got to get more value than a, a regular two-hour practice out of today. We've got to get more out of it than that. Over the past few weeks, Joel's been kind of talking about how he feels like he's letting his team down. What do you think is going right for him and wrong in that sense? You know, a lot of guys, uh, and, and Joel a little bit, I'm not going to say that this is him complete, but a lot of guys, uh, how their shot goes, that's how they feel like they're going. Uh, but Notre Dame, you know, he made the biggest play. He was, they had to cut it to two, and he comes down and makes the basket. Uh, Clemson, you know, he shot it great. He didn't have a very good defense game, but he did make it ever since he scored 31 points or something and didn't score but one basket in the last 12 minutes of the game. But uh, I think he's taking probably a little bit of load on it. Maybe he shouldn't have to try to take all of it by himself uh, because he does have to play. But so does Kenny, so does Isaiah, and so does Justin, and so does uh, Theo and uh, all the guys. But uh, I like Joel's competitiveness and the willingness to say, yeah, I've got to play better. I like that. We've seen Justin's improvement on the court this season, Justin Jackson. What have you seen behind the scenes off the court as he, like him growing as a leader? Well, I think the, the improvement goes with that is he's spent all the time and he's working. He's worked extremely hard on his shot, and that gives him more confidence. That gives the players more confidence, and that makes him a better leader. I think he's worked harder in the weight room. That's changed his body a little bit, and I think that gives him more confidence and plays better, and it gives his teammates more confidence as well. But uh, I just think it's a lot of sweat is what he's put in. He's put in the time. He's put in the time to shoot the extra shots before practice, after practice. He spent some extra time in, in, in the building here and did a great job academically first semester as well. So he's he's got his priorities right. What was the thing that you really wanted him to work on, like in the off season when you sat down and met with him? I guess it was the last spring. Two things easily: do you got bodies got to get better because you got to get bigger, stronger, quicker, faster, more athletic, and then the ball's got to go in the hole. And, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. Putts better go in at some point if you want to win. But, uh, and I think he's really put in the time to do that too. Right. It sounds and like I was trying to, I, I can't remember uh, what his assist to error ratio was last year, but it's, I think, fairly close. I don't think he's improved that drastically. His defense grades are a little better, but I think the two biggest things is uh, uh, what he did with his body and the ball's going in the basket. How pleased were you with what he did over the summer in terms of his work ethic? I'm extremely pleased, you know, because I think he did put in a lot of time, and I think it's pretty well shown that uh, it was valuable time. Well, we all know why the schedule is back loaded, but how do you that versus? If you know why it was back loaded, how about share that with me? They say just the computer spreads it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's just uh, theorize this to you. But how does that over the years you've obviously? To get out how to tone down the practices a little bit and get keep the kids healthy. Yeah. This makes it particularly hard, doesn't it? It really does because you need more practice time. You get ready to play Virginia, you get ready to play Duke, you can play in Louisville, play in Notre Dame, play in that state and at Pittsburgh. A couple of years ago we had a schedule that was really backloaded. That was really, really difficult. And we we got through that one all right. Uh, this one is uh, I was stunned. I was looking at one of the uh, RPI things. And last week before the Duke game, our strength of schedule was 22. And we played Duke at Duke, and this week our schedule, strength of schedule was ranked 22. He had got no credit for playing Duke at Duke. So a lot of those things I have a tough time figuring out, and that was one of them. But this schedule is, uh, uh, with all those teams at the end, it's by far the most difficult in the league, especially the teams that are up there trying to be in the top half of the league. Uh, but the bottom line is, you know, you got to play it. But I, I would like to figure out how that happens, but uh, uh, playing Duke, uh, Virginia, uh, not playing them at all for 20 games, and then all of a sudden playing them twice each in a two or three week period is pretty difficult getting your team ready. And then Louisville's another style of play, Virginia's another style of play, Duke's another style of play. And uh, sometimes you don't worry too much about style of play because you think you can just overcome it. But I think this the thing that you get from Duke, Virginia, Louisville, and even Pittsburgh, I mean, because they're a unique lineup. Uh, it's been something that's it's harder to take more time off because I think we need to do more things in practice, but yet you got to have fresh legs, and I think that's one of the things you're talking about there. you got to keep them fresh. And that's a computer drawer. It has nothing to do with <laughs> it's what they tell me. sweeps or anything like that? That's what they tell me. You know, <laughs> I, 
you know, I don't believe everything everybody tells me either, <laughs> especially when it comes to that. When, when a team has a losing streak, outsiders will say the coach has lost the players or lost the team. Is that is that a risk? Are there things you can do to prevent that infrastructure? Right? Well, usually the people who say it have never been in the locker room, and that's hard to figure out too. But uh, I mean, we lost eight, and I said my first year, no, everybody thinks it. It's always been so smooth and easy for over. We lost eight games in a row, and there's not one guy on my team that I felt like we had lost at any point. Not one guy. And in 2010, uh, the players even said, you know, that they weren't sure they wanted to go to the NIT, and I said, we're going. If somebody invites me to play, I'm going to go play. And they all talked about how important that was, you know, that I still wanted to. We still wanted to practice every day. We still wanted to try to get better. I was dumb enough to think we were going to go to the ACC tournament, win the sucker, make the NCAA tournament. But uh, yeah, it's. I know through that stretch, I never thought that uh, we lost the team. Uh, I have never been in anybody else's locker rooms to see if I approve of how they handle negative things going on or disapprove. But uh, uh, coaching is hard. And you know what's really hard is coaching and trying to win in this league. That is really hard. What sort of environment are you expecting over there, given the situation that they're in and all the stuff swirling around them? I think they'll be a little enthused. You know, uh, uh, they look at us and think we could uh, uh, ride a lot of bad nights and make some bad things not nearly as bad. And uh, Hubie Brown told me one time a shooter is one who makes up for a multitude of sins. When you're playing a big rival and uh, you go in and you play well and you win, that cures a lot of ailments at that time as well. Coach, uh, seventh had four points and four assists, no turnovers against Duke. Has he progressed this season, and is he progressing at the rate you want him to? He's not progressing at the rate I wanted to, but I wanted it more. I wanted this first game of the season, but he is getting better, and finally his body is getting healthy. I mean, he went through the end of January, the end of December, with a scale of one to ten, his body felt like six, so he's got it up to eight now, and we're still doing some things with him in the trainer's room every day to try to get him completely healthy, but uh, he had a good eight minutes there in Durham the other night. He really did. Anybody else? All right, we'll get Joel in here. Thank you.